gentlemen, welcome. And they tempt me with violence. And they punish me with ideals. And they crush me with an image of my life that's nothing but unreal. Except on the goddamn slave ship of failure And I'll drown here trying To get up for some air But each time I think I breathe I'm laid on with a double share Of the punishing I don't deserve to be down here, but I'll never leave. And I, I've learned one thing, you can't escape the beast in the night. Hello, I am Prometheus. I recently watched a documentary. As you can no doubt tell, it's called Expelled, No Intelligence Allowed. There was a bit of an uproar when this video was let loose in theaters. Sadly, lacking the money, I couldn't see it there and had to wait until it came out on DVD. What I saw was shocking. Scientists rejected from the scientific community just for trying to publish new discoveries. I was rather startled by this, and asked myself how there could be such a conspiracy without anyone knowing. I took Mr. Stein's advice. I investigated, and I thought critically. What I found shocked me almost as much. Mr. Stein, I have seen your movie, and although it has its merits, I'm afraid there are some fundamental issues. I did like your speech about freedom at the beginning, particularly regarding freedom of speech and inquiry. Freedom is the essence of America. We're talking about freedom of speech, freedom of assembly, freedom from fear, freedom of religion. Martin Luther King said, America is essentially a dream. And he said it is a dream of freedom. And equality. I am sure and then is that you won't file any reports with YouTube to have my video taken down. I will be using a few clips from your movie. But being that this video regards science and will be free to viewers, it will be legal as fair use under both U.S. law and YouTube copyright policies. Ironically, this is the same method you yourself use to dodge being sued for using the song Imagine in your movie. Oh, and speaking of which, John Lennon was singing about a utopia of sharing and caring, with no religion to tell us to go die for someone. Associating this song with Stalin in Communist China is gravely misrepresenting his message. As such, Yoko filed suit not to protect a possession, but to stop you from corrupting the message of the man she loved. if these freedoms were taken away where would we be what would we lose well unfortunately i no longer need to imagine it's happening we are losing our freedom in one of the most important sectors of society science i have always assumed that scientists were free to ask any question to pursue any line of inquiry without fear of reprisal quite you can do whatever scientific experiments or investigations you want. But recently, I've been alarmed to discover that this is not the case. It all began when I met evolutionary biologist Richard Sternberg in Washington, D.C. 
So who is Richard Sternberg? Well, he used to be the managing editor for the peer-reviewed journal Proceedings of the Biological Society of Washington. Sternberg has two PhDs, one in molecular evolution, ironic, I know, from Florida International University, an excellent law and business school, and a PhD in system science from Birmingham University, another good business school. His life was nearly ruined when he strayed from the party line while serving as editor of a scientific journal affiliated with the prestigious Smithsonian Museum of Natural History. So now you're not there anymore because you're a bad boy. No, I'm not. No, I was, I was exiled. You're a bad boy. Bad boy indeed. Sternberg wasn't even fired. He was just demoted from managing editor to researcher. Long ago, in the year 2004, he published an article entitled The Origin of Biological Information and the Higher Taxonomic Categories. And what was the premise of the article, you might ask? Lots of evolution happened within six million years. Therefore, evolution must be directed by an intelligent being. Yep, it was a paper on the Cambrian explosion. The thing is, you can't exactly be fired for publishing bad science. There's a system of peer review. You put the article out to a few scientists, they give you their thoughts, and if they think it's a good idea, you publish it. So, essentially, it's typically the scientists who get the final word on whether something gets into the journal or not. Doing this, the editor is able to remain objective. So why would they ask him to resign for that? Are they trying to hide something? The answer is no. They demoted Dr. Sternberg because he failed to remain objective. For one thing, he specializes in the evolution of organelles and proteins. This would have been better left to one of the more qualified editors, two of whom specialized in Cambrian fauna. So why wouldn't he defer this to someone else? Because he's an ID advocate. He's lectured in at least one ID convention on the subject of irreducible complexity of complex organ systems. As a systems scientist and molecular evolution expert, he should know the effects of adding and subtracting redundant systems. Start with a flowchart three blocks long, add a redundant chain two blocks long, subtract one from the three block chain, and you wind up with an irreducibly complex four block chain. I'm a second year engineering student and I get this. Why can't he? Hell, we can even find examples in nature of organisms missing irreducibly complex organs. We can find creatures without stomachs, without lungs, without blood vessels, without brains, shit wrong slide, without brains. Another thing he did, academic dishonesty. He refused to submit the names of the three qualified biologists who reviewed this work. Had he submitted them, he could claim objectivity and could have kept his job. His boss might not have liked him, but there you go. Submitting the names of the scientists would have made the paper a genuinely peer-reviewed article, the first on intelligent design ever. So why didn't he do this? He claims it's to protect the careers of those biologists. The truth of the matter is, if he included them, the paper would have been published in the magazine where it would have been open to rebuttal. That's exactly what he wouldn't want. This article would have been intellectually vivisected, butchered, digested, and shat out by the scientific community. It simply would not survive. Why not, you ask? Well, the reason for the Cambrian explosion is already understood by the scientific community. Let's examine. When iron is exposed to atmospheric oxygen, the iron reacts with it, forming ferric iron oxide, or rust. A deposit of rust in a geological column is called a red bed. Now, no red beds are formed more than about 2.3 billion years ago. 